<laughs> All right, so this is the last of the Chariots of Fire scenarios. This is Troy. Uh, got my little grumps about it, but, well, for one thing, um, this seems to be taking sort of a, a view that I kind of disagree with, that it's probably Troy 7, uh, which was kind of a minor one. But that, I don't know how much that affects the game situation. But one thing that does is fairly recent archaeological evidence shows Troy as being more than just the little hilltop town, but it actually expanded quite over. Uh, and quite possibly the Greek boats, or as... Uh, to keep true to truer to the Iliad, the Danian boats uh, were actually pretty close to Troy uh, comparatively. Uh, it looks, I don't know if these are supposed to be two little lakes, but man, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, scenario has some significant differences from most of the others. We've only had one scenario with heroes and it only had two heroes. This one's just filled with heroes. This is why the heroes rule is in the game. Um, and yet, <laughs> they have to come up with special rules in the scenario for the heroes in this scenario. Uh, even though they're the only pure heroes which are sort of covered in the other. That's a little disturbing, but that's okay. It's the second disturbing factor Maybe doesn't affect everyone because I haven't seen anyone else complaining about it. But the Trojan leaders are lacking names. Now, they have names over on the counter scan uh, that's included in the version of the game I have. Um, they have the correct names in here. I'm having trouble showing this. Let's see. These are the counters. Hector is fine, but the other three are actually not even uh, covered in there. The heroes have their names. Kind of an annoyance um, because they match the AM counters, which do have the names on them. Uh, this is going to be Aeneas, there's no question there, I can tell that. But the other two are equal on the front and they don't have the backs. So I made the S guy the S guy. Uh, whatever. Uh, I've set up the forces. Let's take a look at any special rules here. So this one doesn't go with wings and commands the way the rest of them go. So it's more like Men of, men of Iron in a lot of ways. You can command anything in your range. Now, obviously your SI units can only move once, uh, but everything else pretty much can act pretty quickly. So it's like going to have a very different flavor to it. Um, let's see what else there is here. So leaders that are killed, well, they don't come back. Instead, a hero becomes the wing commander with a rating of 4-2. Okay, and this is what confused me at first. I thought these were going to be replacement wing commanders, and I'm like, you don't need replacements in this scenario. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, so momentum. You're allowed to activate all your chariot command mounted commanders and heroes when you get this. This is, I think, the only way heroes can be specifically commanded, according to the rules, which causes a problem because if they dismount, they can never be commanded again. I don't think that's what's intended. Let me make sure I'm correct with that. They may be able to move
See so here, it can voluntarily change its movement mode only when activated. Activated by 10.14, let's find that. Heroes move when their momentum am is drawn. Well, this specifies that they only move if they're mounted and their momentum shit is moved. That's a little disturbing. I, I really don't know if that's what's intended, but they say here this provides players with a more in, most interesting tactical decision. Uh, once your chariot's gone, you can never do anything? That doesn't sound too... I don't know, but that may be what he's hinting at there. Um, I don't buy it. I think chariots would come back and pick up uh, the wire if they left them behind. In fact, one of my thoughts about chariots, uh, at least the three-person chariots, <coughs> is that they may well dismount troops. That may be what you see with those runner infantry, though. And those would be with the two-person chariots, is that a third person is actually sort of being dragged along on it. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, and jumping off and fighting in the midst of things. Uh, whatever, I'm not sure I'm happy with the idea that you can never uh, recall your heroes, in this case, and alternatively I could say, well, chariot mounted modifies commanders and not heroes. And that's how I'm going to pretend to understand this. Uh, we have standards in this game. Both armies have their own standard, but there's this Trojan contingent which treats Troy itself as its standard, and it retreats into Troy, like in some of the other scenarios where there was a city. Uh, the Danians actually, I don't believe, have a standard. So I lied to you. They have their camp way back there. Hmm. That's a long run back and forth. And if that fills up with units, routed units are destroyed. They're going further deep into camp. Okay. All right. Scenario-wise, I chose to play Patroclus's Big Day. There's basically, you could play with everything, or you could play with Achilles and Patroclus, and the Myrmidons aren't in the battle, in which case uh, the Danian route level drops down lower, and it makes it even harder on them. But I'm going to do the Patroclus Big Day. The only effect of that is Achilles isn't in the game, unless Patroclus is killed. And if he's killed, he comes in over on the western edge and runs in to attack. Uh, leader values have been changed. Remember, I think I mentioned last time, only the overall commander normally counts. Well, he doesn't count much in this anymore, and the wing commanders and the heroes all count victory points. Got the points, uh, or route points. The points established, the Danaeans are at 120 and the Trojans at 115. The Danans start off the map, they separate into three columns, and they enter based on those columns with these guys coming on the momentum chip. They're going to have the initiative. Everybody's going to be in column at the beginning of the battle. That's optional, but, well, I mean, it's up to the players whether or not they want to be in column, but I want the extra movement points um, to push forward, maybe take this minor river as some kind of defensive line. There aren't a lot of chariots in this battle. You can see this is about all there is for the main Trojan force. There's a few more in Troy itself. And the Danaeans have just these few here. I've divided my divisions up, and I don't know how they're going to actually fall out, but I've divided them up into a formation of barbarian infantry. There are a lot of barbarian infantry on both sides in this and chariots, and the light infantry. Uh, a mixed shock barbarian and a pure shock in the center with the extra unit. Whereas over here, let's see what we've got. I've put kind of the shock infantry in the center, barbarian infantry planning to push to the flanks, and then the chariots, well, I probably should have pushed them over to this side. It's going to be kind of weird because I'm going to be commanding, you know, in, in most of the Chariots of Fire scenarios, you either got a Chariot Division 
or an infantry division. Now and then there's some mixed stuff, but here everything's just a mishmash, and also there is command control is going to be exercised on an ad hoc basis. You can move units multiple times. All right, let's get going. Now I'm sorry I misread this. It says actually commandos, commanders and hero and heroes on foot cannot participate in the move. I don't know if this supersedes the normal heroic movement though. The normal heroic movement says all the heroes can move when you get a momentum counter. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say this is an additional capability, otherwise heroes become stupid. Uh, once they dismount, they can never move at all, which seems goofy. The um, it does provide an interesting tactical opportunity in the sense that you can shift a, a bunch of leaders all at once without uh, having to roll a die for your momentum and, or, and, and stuff like that. So it, it does still provide a, a great deal of interest to the scenario. Uh, as you can see, I've already started pulling uh, some of the uh, Greeks in. I'm going to call them Greeks. The hell with that. Should I call them Mycenaeans? That would... I mean, it's Mycenaean culture. Yeah. Homer called them Danians. And every now and then Achaeans. Okay. And uh, I rolled successful momentum for Hector, and I'm trying to figure out what the hell, how to get him out of there. And stepping back, getting enough of a panorama. That's, uh, you know, not some neat formation here, but kind of a mess. Uh, chariots and heroes stringing out ahead there, hoping maybe find a way across the river before uh, the Trojans and their allies make their way across or up to the river. The reason the river's a big deal it's not a, counts as a minor river. It costs a couple extra movement points to cross. But here's the problem. E checks for chariot turnover so there's a penalty for chariots going across it. For infantry uh, SI and HI take a hit crossing it unless they're in column, which means it's a minor obstacle at best. You know, it's going to uh, create a slight penalty. It also has a, an effect if you attack across it. It's going to create a slight penalty uh, of a hit or um, a potential hit for the chariots. Um, but that's about all you know, the terrain there really is. It's still f fairly flat plain. These uh, hills, I was all clustered on a hill. Could I have defended that? Well, that counts as an upslope one level, which does almost nothing. It has, again, a battle effect, but this has both the battle effect and uh, an additional effect in terms of disrupting the units as they cross it. And then what about marsh? That sounds horrible. No chariots in it. 2B, yeah, the, uh, the shock and heavy infantry, and there are no heavy infantry here, which I find surprising. I don't think there should be many, but it strikes me, for example, the way that uh, some of the armor was described at least for the Greek heroes. And it's kind of pictured like it on the things. These guys were pretty heavily armored, actually. Now, if the heroes were so heavily armored, okay, granted, they're probably the highest of the nobility or whatever, but wouldn't there be likely other heavily armored people on the field? It wouldn't just be a handful. Um, and my inclination is that they probably should have uh, some more heavily armored forces on on the uh, probably on both sides, but certainly on the Greek side. All right, I'm going to wrap this one, uh, zip it up, and uh, well, we'll come back and see what happens as they come closer.